What you do when you don't have to do it determines where you are later when it's too late to do anything about it. Hello everyone, Ron here with Southwest Colorado Adventures with a tip for you in case you happen to get stuck on a mountain trail or anywhere else for that matter with your adventure touring motorcycle and you have to stay overnight. What do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Safety Tip Friday. Nobody wants to have an emergency situation, but in my experience, the more prepared you are for it, eh, just like an insurance policy, the less likely you are to use it. But if you do need it, it's there. Now stay tuned until the end for the 10 essentials that you need to pack with you for mountain survival. Some of this information is what I've gathered from study of SAS Handbook by John Lofty Wiseman. Some other parts have come from hunter safety courses by the Colorado Department of Wildlife. And also an article by Lindsay B. King with 5280.com in her July 2019 article titled, A Rookie's Guide to Surviving Colorado Backcountry. The first thing we're gonna talk about, we've talked about before, and that's having an accountability person that you're telling where you're going, when you're gonna be gone, when you're gonna come back, so that they know if you miss those check-in points, there may be an issue. That's even why in some places, before you go hiking up in the mountains, you've got to check in with the ranger station so they know if or when they need to come out and look for you, search and rescue. The other part of this is ride with somebody if you have the opportunity. I don't always have somebody to ride with, but I do what I can to make sure that people know where I'm going to be. And I've got apps on my phone that give my location beacon back to my wife. So the real question is, what can happen out on a mountain? Well, a lot of things. One thing that seems like it's very simple is just getting off the trail. I know that I've been in circumstances where I'm riding along a trail and I look down and I'm like, is this a game trail or is this the trail trail? If you find value in my videos, consider subscribing. There's more to come. So let's think about all the Forest Service roads and trails that we're going to be traveling on. How accurately does your GPS currently track where you're going? How accurately does Google Maps take you to Forest Service Road 566? Heck, sometimes Google will drive you straight in the ocean. Now I talk about Silverton, Colorado a lot, and that's just because I love that area. There is so much to do, and it's pretty darn close to home. It's only about an hour and a half away from here. But even in a Jeep up in the passes on the four-wheel drive trails, I've gotten out on what I thought was one pass, looked down at the map, and after I finally figured out where I was, I wasn't even on the right pass. So it can happen. You know, a four-wheel vehicle is completely different than a motorcycle, right? So another thing to think about is if you're out on the trail and you're starting to get hungry, you look down at your watch and you say, oh my gosh, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon and you're at maybe the halfway point of your ride, you may have started off too late or the trail that you're going on is too long. So think about this. The monsoons in Colorado come in the afternoon and they can get you wet. They can make the rocks slippery, which there's a lot of rock up here, without a doubt, there's mud. But more importantly, if you didn't prepare for that type of weather, the rain can get in, it can make you cold, and in the summertime, you can still get hypothermia. Another thing to think about, Colorado is ranked third for the state having the most lightning deaths. And a lot of this stuff occurs up at altitude. Storms come fast, and they're not always on your weather apps. I guarantee that. If it's the afternoon, it's summertime, and you're up above 10,000 feet, you have to plan for a storm. You have to plan for a monsoon. Just do it. Be safe. So if something does happen, you need to have a way to contact somebody. And this thing right here may or may not work. There's a lot of places, even driving between where I live and town, that don't have cell service. Up on a mountain, it's pretty sketchy. I'll tell you that for sure. Something to think about before you go up at altitude and you start planning for all of the things that could happen. Because that's what you do with an insurance policy. That's what you should do whenever you're going up to what could be a potentially dangerous place, which above 10,000 feet in the mountains is potentially a dangerous place. The Corsair card. Colorado Outdoor Search and Rescue. Now, just because you have this card, doesn't mean there's an automatic beacon is going to be sent up if you go off the bike and are stuck on the side of a trail with a broken leg or something like that. What it does do, though, is this funds the organizations that if that happens, 
come out and rescue you. You don't have to have the card for them to come and rescue you. Don't worry about that. This is just taking care of the folks that are going to take care of us if we need them. And hopefully we don't. In fact, when I did the Kennebec Mountain Run, which had an elevation gain of about 3,500 feet, and actually that was one of the rides that I did. It was my first ride, and it's awesome. But to even enter that race, I had to have a search and rescue card. Okay, so let's talk about how do you actually get a hold of somebody when you are out of cell service. There are some options. I'm going to talk about three of them right now. One of them is the Zolio Satellite Communicator. That runs about $199. And by the way, I'm going to put links to all of this stuff so you can research till your heart's content down in the description. Each one of these does require a monthly plan to actually be able to access the satellites. This one actually works through an app on your phone and puts you in contact with the satellite so that regardless of whether there's cell service or not, you will still have satellite communication, which is a very good thing. Another is Garmin InReach Messenger. It's a handheld satellite communicator for text. That one's gonna run about $2.95, requires a monthly plan, and you know, I like Garmin. I've had Garmin watches and stuff to track my runs and my rides and stuff when I'm out mountain biking. They've always held up, they've been very durable, and worked really well for what I needed them for. And here's a suggestion from our friend Itchy Boots. If you don't know who Itchy Boots is and you're watching this, then I'm gonna put a link up top so that you can go to her channel as well. She is a adventure touring gal from Norway, and she's awesome. She's got so much information, and her website has a lot of information as well. What she uses is another Garmin product. It's the Montana 700i. Now, if you need navigation system and satellite communication like me, I haven't actually bought a motorcycle-specific waterproof GPS unit for my motorcycle. So it makes sense to me to go ahead and get the Montana because it has both the navigation as well as satellite communication built into it. Again, a monthly plan is required for that as well. That one's going to run you $699, but it's a two for one. So what else can happen when you're out on a trail? Well, you could get injured or more importantly, your baby could get injured. Obviously, I'm talking about your motorcycle. Could have a breakdown. It's possible. She would never let you down on purpose, but it happens. Run into a big enough rock, it'll happen. In the midst of all these things that may happen, if you get stuck on a mountain for any period of time, you may experience altitude sickness. I actually did a video just a week or so ago about altitude sickness and how to mitigate the effects and prepare yourself for going up a higher altitude. I'll link that up top as well. Here are the 10 essentials to pack just in case. Number one, food for overnight. Protein bars. It doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to make lasagna out on the trail. You don't have to take a Dutch oven with you. Take something that's going to give you some calories, preferably with some simple sugars in it, because that helps your body acclimate so that you can keep yourself from getting too hungry. Make sure that you carry enough water, not only for the trip that you're planning, but also for the trip that you may not plan, which is hanging out overnight on a mountain or having to deal with the breakdown until somebody else gets there carry enough water. Take extra clothes. Now the good news is, as an adventure tourer, you probably have plenty of layers on and potentially in your saddlebags as well. Take an emergency blanket. You know those little reflective things that cost like 97 cents at Walmart? Take one of those. Take a tarp. If you need to build a shelter, those can be super effective, even though they're very simple, at keeping the wind out and keeping your warmth of your body in. Again, if you're finding value in this video, please slap a like on it. Consider subscribing. Take waterproof matches. How else are you going to light a fire? Oh, wait a minute. I'm going where it's rocky, not where there's any trees. Okay, that's fine. Take a can of Sterno with you as well. Even though Sterno only puts out a small flame, relatively speaking to some potentially freezing temperatures outside, that flame is going to help you retain your body heat and create some on its own. As an alternative to Sterno, you can also dip cotton balls in petroleum jelly and pack those in Ziploc bags and take them with you. A little more packable, I would say, too. Take a first aid kit. I mean, heck, just having some band-aids, maybe an ace bandage, you know, some basic stuff can go a long way towards treating an injury up on the mountain. Take a little bit of paracord and a multi-tool so that you can cut that. If you have a multi-tool with a knife and fork on it, maybe you can take some stroganoff, MREs, or something like that. Take a light. 
just throw a small flashlight in your pack. Yes, I know cell phones have flashlights. How long is it going to last? Just plan ahead. So if you actually do come to a point where you're going to create some shelter, then think about this. Your motorcycle, if it has the ability to stand upright and you've been riding it, if you can get that shelter thrown across while the engine's warm, then that's going to be some built-in warmth at least for a time being. At least long enough to get it built, get you tucked in and then get your sterno going or your cotton balls, any of that is going to help. Do not run the engine with a tarp over your motorcycle. I'm sure I don't have to say that, but as a disclaimer, I don't want anybody to say, that guy on YouTube said, run my engine when I was in the thing. Well, no, I, that is not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> don't do that. Now I'm going to myth bust here as well. Have you ever heard that the majority of your body heat goes out the top of your head when you're cold? I have. Is it true? No. WebMD has an article on that. I'll link to it. Your head makes up about 10% of your body. And in a lot of cases, your head is the only part of your body that's not covered. So in that situation, the majority of your body heat that is escaping from your body is coming out the top of your head because it's not covered. If your legs weren't covered, they'd be leaking out body heat as well. So maybe take a hat. Keep as much of you warm as possible. Bottom line is, any part of your body that's not covered is going to lose body heat. So one of my mountain rides is going to be coming up here shortly. If you're curious about what it looks like whenever I'm riding on a mountain, that'll be something you can check out to give you an idea. I enjoyed you all joining me today. Everyone stay safe out there. Thanks, y'all.